Ableton just released a new update for live, 10.1.13. Although this is a smaller point release, there's still some really cool new features that you might miss if you don't read the release notes. So I'd like to go over my top five now. Number one, it's now possible to create a remote scripts folder in the user library where user and third party scripts can be added for use with MIDI controllers. Added scripts will appear in the link slash MIDI preferences tab. This way, every time you update live, you won't have to reinstall all of your custom MIDI remote scripts. In my case, I use CliffX Pro from Stray, distributed by Isotonic Studios. Touchable, which is a great iPad or iPhone controller for Ableton Live. And also a custom script for my MIDI Fighter Twister that was created on Remotify.io. Number two, while recording on Push... Pressing the fixed length button near the end of a segment of time that corresponds with the global quantization setting will cause live to wait until that amount of time has elapsed before stopping the recording. In this case, I can see my fixed length is set to four bars by holding down the fixed length button. I'm in note mode and I've set in preferences a count in of one bar. So when I hit record, it will start recording and then as it's recording, I can just hit fixed length in the middle of the recording and then it will truncate that to four bars. So here we go. One, two, buckle my shoe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Number three. When push is connected, other control surfaces will no longer conflict with the automatic track arming behavior of push. This can be useful if you're performing live and you want to switch back and forth between different instruments on push while leaving tracks record enabled on, say, an APC-40 Mark II that you may want to capture other tracks of sequences or audio clips on the fly. Number four. It is now possible to select parameter banks of Max for Live and plug-in devices via the Novation Launch Key Mark II control surface. That's done by pressing and holding this In Control button next to the knobs and selecting which bank of parameters you'd like to control along the top row of pads. In this case, I'm changing the banks of operator as indicated in the bottom left of the screen. And number five, if a track with a plug-in device is unfrozen, has its plug-in parameters or preset changed, and is frozen again, it will now record new audio instead of using the old frozen audio file. This is more of a bug than a feature, but I can confirm on an older version of Live that this is the case. So if this has caused you headaches in the past, rest assured it's fixed now. These are just a few improvements that stood out to me. A link to the full list from Ableton can be found below. Be sure to like and subscribe if this was useful to you. And thanks for watching.